So, in case you weren't aware, most meetings suck, and at Occupy we try to make our meetings suck a little bit less. Um, yeah, this is what we came up with. So, I'm AJ, I dislike authority and hierarchy, and especially vertical hierarchy that pretends to be horizontal. <laughs> So I won't try to convey the meaning and depth of the Occupy movement in a five minute talk, but feel free to ask me about it anytime. So uh, you know how meetings start to suck as soon as you have three or more people in them? Well, imagine what it's like when you have dozens or hundreds of people all trying to make decisions together and giving everyone an equal voice. Uh, I'll tell you what happens. Your general assemblies take forever. And so at Occupy, we, um, we needed to add parallelism and concurrency to our meetings, which we did via hand signals. You don't need slides, hand signals. Uh, I don't actually really need slides. As it turns out, most of uh, what is expressed during meetings amounts to some form of agreement or disagreement. You know, like, take this with a grain of salt, but I just want to throw this out there. Uh, I know it might sound crazy, but uh, enough, enough of the madness. Um, we can replace that with hand signals, the first of which represents agreement. Feel free to participate, like try it out during this talk, by the way. Um, you can call this jazz hands. It comes from the ASL sign for applause. Um, what about disagreement? That gets a little more complicated. The traditional advice is to use lots and lots of very nice and polite words, which is nice, but takes forever. So we have replaced all of that with three hand signals. When you have reservations about what's being said by a speaker, you can express it like this. Uh, if you disagree, same thing, but with your fingers pointing down. And if you feel so strongly opposed to something that you'll leave the movement if it passes, you show that with a blocker. So um, what about when you have something to express that's more complicated than just yes or no? We managed that with a rotating facilitator in charge of what we call the stack. If you have something to say, um, you raise your hand, uh, you get added to the stack, and you have 30 seconds or less. Um, if you must speak, be quick about it, and don't interrupt other people. Yeah, I inverted those slides, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, what about when you just have something really quick to interject, and you know it's rude to interrupt, but you just want to say this one tiny thing real quick. Uh, actually, some of those interruptions can be useful, so we have three different hand signals for those. Uh, when you have a direct response to something that was just said, uh, you have 10 seconds or less with all of these, by the way, and no opinions allowed. So a direct response to add a quick piece of unopinionated information or correction. Um, and then we have the points of clarification. If you need more information before you can make an informed decision on a topic, you just indicate it like this. Such as, when you said chips, did you mean fries? <laughs> and then, if a violation of the process has occurred, or if someone is straying off topic, you can indicate that with a point of order, just a little triangle with your fingers. And the nice thing about this one is that when people see it, they tend to autocorrect and just bring themselves back on topic. So, this is my personal favorite. Have you ever been in a meeting where someone is just going on and on and repeating themselves? and you just want to throw yourself out the window. Uh, this is the one that I always wish I could do during meetings uh, without being seen as rude or aggressive or any of that bullshit. Like, this is the wrap it up. So practice it with me now. Please make use of it during the meetings. Um, it's wonderful, it's liberating, and desperately needed, in my opinion. So I should mention that Occupy did not invent this stuff. Um, we adapted it from a long tradition of anarchists who are hyper-organized and efficient during their meetings. I would encourage you to read about it, uh, as well as Quaker meetings um, and Robert's Rules of Order. So the takeaway here is that even though leaderless decision-making is really hard, it's worth it, because uh, a lot of great ideas come from marginalized groups, if we do say so myself. And this is one way of eliminating gender bias, um, helping introverts who often also have great ideas, uh, yeah. reducing interruptions. Yeah.
So there you have it. Congratulations. You've just cut your meeting times in half. Highly scientific figure there. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics, so feel free to ask me about it anytime. And yeah, thank you.